Welcome to the Snow Family Racing Garage. The Riviera has a vibration at speed, and I'm pretty sure it revolves around the ancient carrier bearing and the U-joints that are in the drive shaft. This car has a two-piece drive shaft, meaning you got a section of the drive shaft uh, from the transmission to the carrier bearing, and then the carrier bearing down to the rear differential. It's got U-joints every which way. So, any number of those things can be loose and causing trouble. Let's get this car up in the air and I'll show you what's under there so that way we can all see what's going on. So the 65 Riviera has a very unique uh, drive shaft frame arrangement. So it has a carrier bearing, which let's see here, it hides, the bolts hide just right here inside the frame. Now the reason it has a carrier bearing is because way up there, about there where my finger's at, that's the tail shaft of the transmission. It's got uh, various cross member to hold up the tail of the transmission and it goes through the frame, this big X frame, so that way it can, you know, clear everything. And then we come back here and it's got this wild, from what I understand, Buick calls that a CV style or constant velocity U-joint uh, arrangement. So it's actually got one, two, I want to say it's got three up there by the carrier bearing and then four would be at the uh, yoke at the output shaft of the transmission. So this is a pretty unique drive shaft. So I'm going to get the, uh, it looks like three, eight, 16, nine sixteenth uh, heads here. I'm going to knock those guys free and then I'm going to come back here and uh, loosen those up and hopefully they're not too frozen with time. This is going to be interesting guys. Let's dig in. So I got the monster out. Yep, count them. How many U joints is that? One, two, three, four. There's the carrier bearing. And five. My goodness. There is something to be said about lightweight drive shafts because that thing is a ton. It's probably 80 ish pounds of drive shaft once I got it on the floor. I was surprised. So. We got a lot of U-joints to get. I gotta go look at parts, but the carrier bearing, this guy right here, this is the section that I think is most of our problems. Given the rubber's all wore out and stuff, I think that's it. I've got the drive shaft for the Riviera up here on the dirty bench for disassembly. Now, this is the double carton joint, and it's more common in the Jeep and truck world. Apparently, I've never messed with it, you know, much of those, so I'd never seen one. But here is kind of the philosophy behind the double carton. There's a post on this side that sticks into a ball and socket over here, and, you know, it kind of gimbals, you know, more truly. The disadvantage here is it's, like, really heavy, and... From what I understand, these are most used when there's extreme driveline angles. So, given that this is kind of a short section from the carrier bearing, would explain why it got the double card in. So, I'm going to start getting things cleaned up, and we're going to start looking at how to disassemble the circlips from the backside here and start taking things apart. I'm probably going to start by getting the uh, nut loosened for the carrier bearing, and also starting on that end because it's simpler and, you know, I'm rather get warmed up on that one than beat myself up on a double carton. I'm at a minor standstill. That nut in there is an inch and seven eighths. The biggest thing I've got is an inch and a half crescent wrench. So I have uh, can't find anything that big local, so I'm going to have to uh, order something off of the internet. Yay. So... Stand still until I get something big enough to take that off. In the meantime, I'm going to start cleaning up all the individual U-joints so I can get them disassembled. So in the meantime, I'm going to start taking these little circlips off of the U-joint. They're in these little grooves that are supposed to help retain the U-joint cap. So I'm going to start uh, getting those guys removed. It's fiddly work and there's not much to see, so I'll let you know when I'm done. So those are the circlips, and I figured I would show you what I'm doing. Basically, they sit around the U-joint cap. Let me get the light here in a way that's going to make more sense, or have it fall over. That's good, too. So I'm just taking a screwdriver, basically putting it on 
the tip here pushing down. And if I can reach the other end, I'll push down on that too. And then it'll basically come off the other end. Let me see if I can get the camera around here in a way that's gonna make anything. Nope, that's not gonna work. So from here, with it pushed downward, there we go. I'm gonna turn the, huge, the drive shaft over with a small screwdriver and just pop it out. Of course, I may be able to do that right here. Let's see here, small screwdriver goes in. This is very hard one-handed, just like that. So I got all 20 of these little sir clips, whatever the heck they're called, retainer rings, whatevers. Few of them actually went flying across the garage. That was fun, ping! Oh, I guess I'm never gonna see that one again until I you know, clean the garage in a big way. But good news is they're all out. I'm gonna wait until I get that wrench to take the drive shaft apart in the middle. Get Buick manual says take it apart. It's a lot easier to handle. I don't blame him for saying that because, you know, trying to handle that thing, it's like all over the place. Here, hold this snake that's constantly moving is about what it feels like. So we're going to wait till we get that wrench. I'm now armed with the biggest wrench I've ever needed. That inch and seven eighths came. So now we have to get to the nut that's hiding in here. And to do that, I'm just going to take ye old Sawzall and I'm just going to cut through the rubber right here because this one is is no good. We don't need it anymore. Let's just get it out of the way. So let's start cutting. So with the drive shaft apart, Make sure you take a look at the splines, make sure everything looks okay. And that carrier bearing doesn't sound so good. It's kind of got some crunch to it. Now, also item of note, when you look down there, you can see the double spline. Now, unfortunately, the other side of the drive shaft doesn't share that double spline. So you saw me take a center punch and put three little dots there and three little dots there. That so that way I get this thing lined back up and that way it's technically in phase as per how Buick built it originally. So I'm gonna start easy. We're gonna start working on that U-joint first. I've got it mocked up in the press and the plates have little half circles that are supporting the drive shaft around the U-joint. And I've got a socket on there that's the right size that's gonna push the U-joint straight down. So I'm gonna start cranking on this. I just separated the uh, drive shaft yoke or the transmission yoke from the uh, rest of the drive shaft. And holy cow, look at that. We were definitely having some U joint difficulties. And other things of note, it's like practically dry. So, definitely an issue. So, now I'm just going to do the same thing again, but this time it's much easier to handle. I'm going to push clear through and then any extra on the back side will take over to the vise and you know work it off and then I'll flip that over and press down and we'll get the other cap out and through To show you this is the first u-joint coming out and there's definitely ridges and wear marks these guys were definitely done so here are the new moog 234 uh, u-joints they come with the u-joint the caps whole nine yards this is even the little uh, spiral clip c-clip whatever you want to call those uh, this is a non-greasable variety i opted for the non-greasable because those double cardons were going to be a pain to try and grease the u-joint if the grease zerk is in the side like some of them are anyways uh, i did already take a cap and set it up against the uh the yoke that's the transmission side yoke everything looks like it's about the right uh, uh you know distance all those things that matches the same one matches haha -ha. doesn't have all the junk on it but it's the same you know diameters and uh, distances and all that stuff so i'm going to i did clean up any little burrs 
that occurred on the uh, removal, plus who knows how long ago they've been in there. But I'm going to put a little tiny bit of grease on the bores when I put them in. So let's get moving. That front you join is in. There's one more step per the factory service manual. And since I don't think I'm any better than Buick, I'm gonna follow what the manual says. Now, this is interesting. The manual calls out that you are to wrap solidly with a metallic hammer here and here, here and here. That's supposed to seat the clips against the U-joint. I don't know if that actually is gonna work, but it's in the manual, let's do it. Still looks okay, all the spiral clips that we can see are where they're supposed to be. I don't know. So guys, that's what I got today. Go check out this next playlist, catch up on things. Thanks for watching, we'll catch you later.